The armor of this dinosaur was so durable that it could absorb the impact of a car driving nearly 50 kilometers an hour. But it's far from the only crazy armored critter lurking in prehistory. Borealopelta Mark Mitchelli, or Mark Mitchell's Northern Shield, was a notosaur found in a Canadian oil sands mine in 2017. It's also one of the best preserved dinosaur fossils of all time. Not only was the skeleton nearly complete, it also preserved the outline of its skin, osteoderms, keratin sheaths, and a large proportion of its digestive system. Even its stomach contents were preserved, mainly ferns, with a small amount of charcoal hinting that there had been a recent fire in the area. And its armor was incredibly strong. Borealopelta was a notosaur, a group of heavily armored quadrupedal herbivores that belonged to the group Ankylosauria. Other Ankylosaurs you may have heard of include Anodontosaurus, whose sledgehammer tail was the stuff of nightmares, Tarkia, who tussled with Tarbosaurus in Late Cretaceous Mongolia, the notosaur Gastonia, whose wicked shoulder spikes protected it from Utah Raptor, and the famous Ankylosaurus, the largest of the group. Notosaurs didn't have club tails, while Ankylosaurids did, although there is some debate about whether or not they really represent different clades. Notosaurs commonly had forward-facing shoulder spikes as well, making it difficult for predators to approach from the front without risking impalement. A 2010 study found that notosaurids had a higher bone strength in their spikes than ankylosaurids, but ankylosaurids had more structural fibers than their osteoderms and thinner bone plates, making their armor more lightweight and not as resistant to damage. The incredibly well-preserved Borealopelta holotype includes soft tissue keratin over the bony armor, which has extremely high impact resistance for a biological structure. Two paleontologists, Michael Habib and Caleb Brown, used keratin strength based on extant mammals with similar structures, including porcupines and bovines, and they calculated the resistance ability of the armor across Borealopelta's entire body. Their results were wild. Borealopelta's bone and keratin composite could absorb 125,000 joules of energy per square meter, compared by the authors to high-speed car crashes. That's a bold claim, so let's test it. Energy generated by a moving object in joules is equal to one half times mass in kilograms times velocity squared in meters per second. We know that the upper limit of a Borealopelta's armor is 125,000 joules, so how fast would a car need to go and how heavy would it need to be in order to damage our happy Canadian notosaur friend? A 2020 Toyota Corolla weighs about 1,500 kilograms. It would need to be moving at 30 miles, or 48 kilometers an hour, to generate enough force to overload Borealopelta's energy-absorbing armor. Although since it would likely have an impact area larger than one square meter, it might need to go faster to do damage. I don't think you could really call 48 kilometers per hour a high-speed automobile collision like the abstract worded it, but it's certainly far more impact than you could reasonably expect most animals to survive, much less tank without injury. Borealopelta's defensive apparatus was so much stronger than it needed to be for predator defense that Habib and Brown hypothesized that the keratin and bone composite originally evolved as a tool for intraspecific combat. The osteoderms were close to interlocking when compressed from the side, creating an extraordinarily durable organic shield in combat that involved shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder ramming. I doubt they were running at 50 kilometers an hour with their heavy set bodies, but with such incredibly durable armor, they'd be pretty much safe to engage in shoving contests to determine mating rights and potential territorial distance. Dispute. That behavior is speculative, of course, but they definitely had the equipment to engage in aggressive combat without real concern for injury. But we've blabbered enough about Borealopelta. Let's give some other prehistoric animals some time in the spotlight. We can't have a video about prehistoric armor and not talk about Dunkleosteus. While recent studies have shown it to be a squat, bulldog-like predator rather than the orca-like monster we grew up with, this sharp-jawed placoderm was still as heavy as a large great white shark. Biomechanical models indicate that it could open and close its jaws faster than a human eye could blink, creating a powerful suction force and then snapping its victims in half. Its armor was made up of thick bony plates between 0.8 and 2.5 centimeters, or up to an inch thick in most places. And on the back of its skull, the armor was up to 7.6 centimeters, or 3 inches thick. While the materials were quite different, consider that most medieval plate armor thickness was typically 1 to 4 millimeters. Talk about metal. Glyptodon is a mammal. I know, we never talk about mammals on this channel, and I am working on being better. Anyway, it was a huge Xenarthran, and its closest living relatives are armadillos. Not much of a surprise there. Glyptodon lived in Pliocene and Pleistocene South America, and lived with predators like Smilodon, so the armor makes sense. It was made of interlocking osteoderms, which are bony inserts created by the dermis layer of the skin. The overall effect formed a dome around its body, including a heavy club tail and a bony helmet. 
While I'm sure that Smilodon took them down on occasion, they'd be more trouble than they were worth the vast majority of the time. Then there's Alamosaurus. Yes, Alamosaurus. This was the most massive decently preserved animal to live in North America, with adults reaching at least 30 tons, and some fragmentary specimens far surpassing those weights. As if being a huge titanosaur wasn't awesome bro enough, Alamosaurus also had osteoderms. It was thought not to until 2015, when Carano and Demick described multiple enormous osteoderms found with a specimen in 1937. They'd gone unnoticed for nearly eight decades. Each one was about 2 to 4 centimeters, or 0.8 to 1.5 inches thick, and ranged from 5 to 15 centimeters, or 2 to 6 inches long. There are nearly a dozen other titanosaur species with preserved osteoderms, including famous examples like Saltosaurus. While these animals weren't super heavily armored like the others we've talked about in this video, it's interesting that they retained such structures at massive sizes. Perhaps they filled some sort of display purpose, in addition to slightly buffing defense. Stegeros is a precious lad. Discovered in 2018 and known from a decently complete articulated skeleton, this Argentinian ankylosaur had the typical stout quadrupedal body plan with a twist. Apart from the sacrum being covered by ossified skin, its tail was covered in massive plate-like osteoderms that fused together to resemble a maquit, or Mexica war club. Stegeros was also tiny, the perfect height to nail you right in the shins if you made it angry. But honestly, anybody who takes off such a cute ankylosaur deserves what's coming to them. Arthropleura was one of the most massive arthropods in Earth's history. Recent discoveries of more material, including the head of a juvenile specimen, show that it was a close relative of modern millipedes and also possessed some centipede traits, indicating that it diverged after the millipede-centipede split within Myriapoda. It was enormous, measuring up to 2.6 meters or 8.5 feet long, and at maximum size would have weighed over 50 kilograms or 100 pounds. Arthropleura's number of body segments, or tergites, increased with age, so it grew longer proportionally over time. As an arthropod, its exoskeleton would have been its main form of defense. It is possible that, like with some modern millipedes, it would have been capable of producing some form of chemical repellent as well, to ward off the large predatory amphibians it lived with during the Carboniferous, although this doesn't have any evidence. Ancient Earth, to put it simply, was a dangerous place. And there are all sorts of other amazing armored animals from prehistoric times that you can learn about, so I encourage you to continue to research if it's a topic that interests you. Speaking of interesting topics, if you enjoyed this video, you'll like the episode on traumatic injuries suffered by dinosaurs in the fossil record. You may also appreciate a project I worked on with nine paleontologists to create a DIY guide to calculating the masses of extinct animals. I appreciate you supporting the channel by watching this far. I'm a fantasy writer and nerd with a biology degree, and I've released two short stories so far in my paleo fantasy series Extinction. You can sign up for my newsletter and download the stories for free using the link in the description. I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time.